Hey guys, uh, hope you guys are well. I just want to thank uh, Aquamate for uh, doing a video on my kitchen slash fish room slash hall. <laughs> so my name is Elvin Kong. Um, on Instagram, I'm better known as ak.aquascape. I guess today I just want to take you guys on a little tour of my fish rooms, okay? <laughs> um, so I've got a few setups here, as you can see. Uh, they're all nano setups, uh, not, not big tanks. The, the largest one is uh, this one here. Uh, we'll start with this one. So this is a Fluval Flex 34 liters. Um, stock lighting, nothing fancy. Um, no CO2 injection. Both of these tanks are low energy aquascape, so there's no CO2 injections. The lights are, you know, moderate intensity. Um, dosing of the furts are sort of not crazy either, okay? Um, so this tank, this Fluval Flex, um, is what I call my jungle beta sorority tank, okay? There's, um, at the moment, five uh, female betas in there um, with um, a couple of um, Cori, so Cori is um, hybrosis. Um, all the plants in here are either epiphytic, low energy requiring sort of epiphytic plants. Buse, Anubius, Nana Petite, one of my favorite plants. Um, mosses, me, uh, pilia, mini pilia moss. There's a bunch of sort of uh, stem plants as well. So Ludwigia Nero, um, Mirophilium metrogrossens, if I say that correctly. It's one of my favorite plants. It grows in any conditions, so um, absolutely love it. Obviously, you can't have a low-tech aquascape without java ferns, right? So I've got needle leaf java fern, I've got a trident, windelof, um, yeah, and, and obviously some crypts as well. So these are the majority of the plants. At the front end of the tank, I actually have tried growing a little carpet with uh, Monte Carlo, hair grass, bacoba, um, yeah, that's, that's mainly it, and um, sort of uh, pygmy chainsaws as well. They're not super large because it is a low tech scape, but um, a little, little carpet going on in the front there. Um, the whole idea of this scape is to bring out a sense of um, sort of controlled chaos. In the front, you've got a bit of a sand bay, a bit of a path, and then you've got your rocks sort of giving a bit of structure to the scape. And as you head towards the back, the back end, the background of the scape, you've got this lush jungle where the, the betta fish just loves to hide, okay? So, um, yeah, I really enjoy the scape. The, the maintenance is, is minimal. Um, I do, if, if you, you know, read my comments on, on my posts on Instagram, I do maintain a very strict uh, maintenance sort of routine. I do, um, for these, both of these scapes, sort of uh, weekly 50 to 60% water change. I clean the imaginary um, algae on the glass every week, <laughs> just as a preventative maintenance, uh, something that George Farmer mentions on his podcast. Um, yeah, and, and I you know, clear up any sort of gunk on, on the, the substrate, the sand, or all the, you know, the poos and, and all the um, detritus, okay? So that helps reduce the amount of waste organics in the tanks, which then promotes a healthy, um, lush tank that's clean. So I guess that's um, about this tank. We can move on now to this um, other um, low-tech um, aquascape, a nanoscape. So this is actually um, the Fire Aqua 30 cube tank. I actually bought this from the, um, the 2020 Underwater um, Expo. Uh, it was on sale, so I bought it. I was like, I'm gonna start a scape <laughs> on this. And it always brings back great memories. Um, Similarly, this is also a, a low tech aqua skip, no CO2 injection. The light I'm using is the Flexi Mini light. Um, sort of very cool design and you know, the light is fantastic. You can look at the, the growth of the plants in here. Um, similar water change and sort of maintenance routine. 
Um, I should mention LCA if I can. Um, yeah, so it's an all-in-one um, sort of um, for water fertilizer that sort of fertilizes the plant, has all the micronutrients that you need. Um, very sort of intuitive instructions on the bottle. Um, so I use that for both of these tanks. I dose that three times a week um, according to the low tech setting. Um, this tank is slightly different in terms of um, the, the layout of the scape. So this tank has evolved quite a bit. It's about almost 12 months old now since um, uh, when I last set up. So yeah, about this time last year was when the underwater um, sort of expo was on. This tank started as a purely an epiphytic scape. So uh, I've got quite strong wood scapes in there, as you can see um, emerging as well. Um, really just Java ferns, uh, Anubias, Buse, that, that was it, okay? Sand, sort of foreground, a little bit of soil in the back, just a couple of stem plants, Metagrossens, um, Mirafila Metagrossens growing. Um, but then I thought I would experiment, try some stem plants. I've got um, a couple different species of Rotala in there. Um, yeah, and with time, they actually grew fairly um, dense, you know, just lots of trimming, not even planting in the soil, just sticking back where, you know, there's a little room where, where it would just wedge and stay. And um, this is, I started with five, six stems, and now there's, you know, oh, heaps of stems in there, um, just trimming. And so the, the Mirafilum is also growing really lush, so it's become not really an epiphytic scape anymore, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, and, and you can see the light um, maintaining that you know strict weekly maintenance routine just keeps everything clean, clean glass, clean water. Um, the livestock is all happy as well, which is a nice segue to talk about the living things in there. Um, I've got a little colony of uh, uh, red cherry shrimps in there that's um, doing fairly well at the moment. They love grazing on the algae, you know, on the fine leaves of the um, uh, mirafilum. Um, I've got cleanup crew wise um, a Britonose pleco who's hiding. Um, his name is Bobo, named after the owner at um, New Life Aquarium. <laughs> um, that's where I got him from. <laughs> um, there's also a uh, juvenile Siamese alga eater that's happily grazing on the leaves. Um, there's um, a school of um, chili resboras as well as um, uh, resbora maculatus. They both just go so well together in this scape. It is a nanoscape, so to put things to scale, having nano microfish with, you know, within a complex foliage of green background just really makes them pop. Um, yeah, so th those are the main fishes. There's a couple of barbs here, um, uh, snake skin barbs and um, ember tetras as well, just sort of hanging around. A um, couple of snails and, and yeah, everything is happy. You know, they're not distressed. They're happy when they see me feed them. Um, yeah, and so this area, legit, this area is where I go for a drink on a, after a long day at work and, you know, this time, this, this day and age, we're busy at work and we come home late, um, it's already dark, can't go out, you've got nature right in your sort of hall in your kitchen and uh, this is why I enjoy the hobby so much. So in the middle here, uh, we've got a little nano paludarium. Uh, you can't really see the hardscape, but there is actually quite a strong hardscape at the back. I've glued maybe six or seven pieces of dragonstone, which is very versatile, easy to glue together. Um, on the bottom of some small scoria, just for you know basin support. There is a little pump at the back, um, just pumping water, you know, down the um, dragonstone like a little waterfall. It's, it's gone nuts, literally. I have used um, LCA's foliage mist and, you know, with weekly maintenance again, 70% um, water, water change. It's just grown nuts over the last sort of three to four months, especially as the weather turned a bit warm. Lots of different plants in here. Most of the plants started sort of um, submerged and they've just grown immersed in this high humidity sort of um, environment. There is a lid at the top to keep the humidity inside. Um, yeah, so the water flows down, you know, there's moss growing in there, there's stem plants, um, lots of um, hydrocortyl tripartita that's growing nuts. It's even grown out of the, the tank itself. 
Um, yeah, so this is another, I suppose, um, display of how versatile nature can be. Um, aquatic plants growing immersed, adapting to the environment. So I guess it's something different, but um, equally as enjoyable. Hmm. All right, so enough of the tank downstairs. We'll go upstairs and have a look at some of our other um, setups. All right, come on. So this is my stairs. There's no aquascape here, but it is a gateway to my other fish room slash bedroom slash study room slash office. That's it, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Welcome, come through. So this is uh, my office slash wabikusa stand slash aquascape room. This is my high-tech um, 45p that's gone a bit jungly at the moment. It's home to a couple of baby um, epistos and, and the mum of the episto. So tell us a bit about this tank. Yeah, so this tank here, um, it's actually, this is probably one of my first proper setups that I've got. Um, lots of great sort of teaching from the master Boaz at, from New Life Aquarium, uh, my mentor really. Uh, really grateful um, about scaping really. So this is the only tank that I've got CO2 injection running. Um, we've got the Aquasky G light from ADA. This is an ADA Cube Garden 45P. Um, so about 36 liters. Um, yeah, so this tank, if you look at it, it's mainly an epiphytic scape by nature. Okay, so there's lots of um, sort of micro java ferns, needle leaf java ferns, windelof, um, there's, you know, a couple of um, lotus plants, buse, uh, yeah. And at the back, there were stem plants, but now it's overtaken by the fern. And I, I just quite like that jungly um, sort of look, really. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's chaotic, but at the same time, it's nature. That's what nature is all about. You know, nature is not straight lines. It's all, you know, zigzaggy and, and exciting. So, yeah. So we've got... Um, the female epistogram uh, Kakatruoides super red. Uh, unfortunately, the dad passed on a while ago due to worms, um, but he's left us with a little, you know, couple of progenies that's sort of hiding around in there. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, th there, there were other fish in there, but the mum got really protective, so she's sort of um, owning the whole, whole tank now. The other fish are like hiding. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my uh, high-tech scape. So the, the, the dosing is also following the high-tech sort of regime. So a lot more um, firsts for this one. Same maintenance routine, you know, weekly um, clean of the, of the, um, subs the gravel area, the sand area, 60% um, water change. Yeah, I've got a skimmer as well there just to keep um, sort of the surface um, scum at bay. Got a couple of uh, shrimps in there doing their job. Yeah, so I equally like the, the tanks downstairs, I enjoy this um, for, for what it is, you know, it, it is a jungle sort of um, nature. <laughs> Absolutely, where'd you get the stands from? Oh, um, they were originally from, is it DH Aquarium, I, I want to say? that th They were the original guys who, who, who had it, and then okay. I got it from Nature Aquarium, like, when I first started the hobby, yep. but I think they got it from DH Aquarium from memory. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the case. What's under the hood? Ah, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. <laughs> you, you don't ask questions like that on your first date. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look. So, nothing special. Oh, it's still better looking than under <laughs> <laughs> my four foot tank. Yeah, so we've got a Sichi um, sort of external filtration over there. There we go, yeah. Ah, yeah. nice. <laughs> We've got, um, uh, you know, CO2 injection, CO2 bottle, all the sort of, um, you know, that's the carbon plus from LCA, that's the all-in-one fertilizer, worms, and um, yeah, and I'm quite big on bacterial products these days, so I use um, a Seacom Stability and Pristine, but there are a lot, loads of other different brands out there just to replenish, um, you know, once a while after I do a maintenance session. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the under the hood. No, very cool. I'm taking note of uh, your CO2 
<laughs> the one bubble per second model. Yeah, one, one to two bubble thereabouts, yeah. <laughs> No, it's very, it's, I mean, it's an awesome cabinet and it, it obviously fits in. Yeah. I it gives you that really classy mm. ADA look, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that, that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but still one of my, um, well, one of my favorite scapes in terms of, um, you know, how, how it's evolved. Um, there was a lot of space in the middle, like a little path, but I've just let it gone wild because I really, like I, I'm, I'm a big believer of um, letting nature do its thing and then just really enjoying, I mean, obviously you tidy up stuff, but um, I just really like how things have just gone crazy by itself, you know, just trimming little areas that look really, really messy. But even if you sit back, this is my little couch. And before bed, I do a bit of mindfulness. I just sit in front, <laughs> play some music, and I just watch the tank and just watch the fish do their thing, watch you know, the breeze you know, produced by the, um, the flow and, and yeah, it's, it's quite relaxing, so. Yeah, so this is actually a, a newer venture. Um, so this one in the mid, so these are all wabikusas. Um, so, so, you know, growing aquarium plants in the emerge form um, and just really, you know, that whole wabi-sabi sort of um, perfect imperfection sort of um, concept, okay? Um, so this one here was actually, I was actually privileged to get um, top 10 in the recent um, AGA wabikusa category contest. Um, and that's evolved again since the competition. Um, you know, lots of different plants here. We've got sort of a Ludwigia, we've got uh, Creeping Jenny, uh, we've got Rotala, um, Hydrocordal Tripartita. There's actually a Monte Carlo carpet at the bottom, but it's kind of gone wild now. Um, and a lot, a mixture of um, Christmas and Java moss um, just tied on to um, a piece of wood here that's now completely covered. So, you know, again, a bit of nature, something that you can find at, at, on the side of, of the creek, okay? So when I look at this, I'm like, yeah, you know, it does give you that feeling that you're out in nature, just taking a stroll. Um, so this is a small little jar from um, Bunnings, eight by eight by eight, less than a liter. Now I do daily 70% water change, it's easy. A little syringe, zoop, you know, and just change it. Just because of the small volume, I like to keep things fresh. Yep. Um, and I spray this um, three times a week with the, LCA foliage mist once again, um, but every other time I actually just spray the doa well, because I miss um, just a bit of moisture. I do that twice a day just to keep it moist. Um, yeah, and it's just growing nuts. Like again, the warmer weather has really brought things up to life, and yeah, so that's, so that's top ten. Yeah, Wabikusa. Yeah, I was really privileged actually. That's amazing, congratulations. Uh, thank you. These three are all wabikusa. So, what actually makes a wabikusa? Yeah. So, uh, in the strictest sense, a wabikusa is really purely aquarium plants. So, some people put, you know, terrestrial plants in there or semi-aquatic plants, but they technically should be purely aquarium plants, like aquatic plants that have grown in the immersed form. Okay. The original wabikusa, um, you know, back to it. So. Takashi Amano sort of, you know, ADA sort of days, is uh, on a substrate ball, a ball of, um, you know, um, soil, uh, aquarium soil, just made into um, a tight ball and you put some um, sort of smackman moss just to retain the moisture and you just plant all kinds of aquarium plants and that's growing immersed in a shallow ball of water. So that's wabikusa. If you, you, know, you say wabikusa to somebody, that's what comes to mind. But, um, you know, this, I suppose you could call it a form of wabikusa. There, are, there is soil at the bottom, there is water, um, and the plants are going immersed. So I will classify this as a wabikusa. Um, yeah, so that, that's what it is by definition. So all three of them look awesome to me. Why is the one in the middle the one that you chose to put in the contest? <laughs> or why is that the one that got the recognition? 
Yeah, well, um, I, I thought it was something unique. Everybody is doing, you know, this tech, the sort of Doha Neo Glass Shello. Um, nobody's doing something, no, no, I haven't seen anybody done something so small, you know, eight by eight by eight centimeter, sort of like a whiskey glass, really. And um, I thought it's something interesting that, you know, in nature, when you go out walking, you know, in a trail, like, things grow in small you know sizes things grow in huge sizes so I just wanted to showcase something really small okay actually there's a story to this on even on the AJ website you can read uh, there was a little puddle right in, in my backyard on a rainy day and a few days after you know the rain you know subsided the, the puddle was still there and I saw a couple of you know plants growing I don't know what plants they are and that gave me an idea that you know if something like a little pool of water could sustain life and you know let's try it here and you know I'm quite glad after nine months it's growing perfect so yeah so that's why I chose this and I mean the other reason was that this wasn't as lush back then so I could have tried <laughs> could have tried this as well but um, yeah I guess we can talk a bit about this one a little yeah, bit absolutely. You... I love that one. yeah so this is the um, Doha Neo Glass Air uh, the shallow it's called air because it's this little space there it's like floating in air um, so it started off as like a pallidromy kind of thing, you know, um, there's clear water and a couple of snails in there. But I really, I've really enjoyed how plant, the plants have grown immersed and really lush. So I've really focused now on the growth sort of up top. Yeah, there's tons of plants in here. This is one of my favorites. So this is what we call the umbrella sedge, actually from our good friends from Bunnings. Um, yeah, Cypress involucratus is the um, scientific name. And it's like started with three, three stems. Um, nine months later, there's you know nine, ten stems there, and it's growing nice. And um, there's again Java moss, uh, Java moss, and Christmas moss growing on the wood. Um, loads of hydrocotyl, um, trapatita. This is actually um, uh, Ludwigia palustaris that's grown um, sort of sideways. From my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. When aquatic plants, you know, grow under high light they rather than going up they grow flat because that they can get lots of light so rather than going up a lot of these plants have decided to go down and sideways which gives a different perspective um to you know to, to wabi kusa yeah Perfect. what lights are those so these are um onf um flat nano stand um similar in design to the flexi mini but they're a different company yeah so um, yeah, I really do enjoy them. So they're perfect for things like wabikusas and terrariums and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think, you know, if more lights like this are being made, I think that's the future for wabikusa because it's easy to grow. You can grow anything, terrestrial plants as well. Uh, but they've obviously worked well. These are just at 50% intensity. I'm not even going 100%. Um, they, you know, they're know, they nice to look at, nice and slick. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks guys for joining me on my little tour of my fish rooms um, and, and having, you know, checking out a couple of my setups. I um, hope you guys enjoyed um, the, the episode. Um, so as I said, my name is Alvin. So if you go on Instagram, you just you can look me up. I'm ak.aquascape. I, I post almost daily um, just about my setups, um, zoom ins or just overall discussion about how I maintain my tanks. And um, for me, it's not so much about being the best you know i i enjoy the whole process and i think um part of having an aquascape it's not just looking at it feeding the fish it's the whole process of oh how can i you know change things up a bit and and really enjoying that process so i look forward to my maintenance session uh, mostly <laughs> and um, i enjoyed you know coming home from work and enjoy it for what it is just um nature okay so i hope you enjoy and, and check me out on instagram you know and, and shoot me a question if you like Yes, yeah, subscribe to Aquaman. Yeah, I have to thank Aquaman for um, ha having me on his episodes. He's done great job, great things with the videos. So um, Aquaman for the win! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so right in the middle here, um, it's a little pelud peludarium. Well, I can't say the word. Peludarium. Peludarium. Um, so uh, you can't really... <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Because I'll try and cut it. Uh, <laughs> it's like just Google. Blah, 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 blah,